Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for everybody who has reached out or who's sub currently subscribing. If you haven't, please do, it helps me um, with my numbers. It helps me to kind of know what's working. Uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up button so I know the videos that you're liking and things like that. If there is content that you wanna see, um, make sure you let me know that. And I will be doing different giveaways and different um, things as we move forward, okay? I'm, I'm trying to roll out as much as I can. So thank you um, for everybody that's um, supporting me in this. So that being said, I'm gonna just dive right in. I think the easiest way for me to continue to do things is by making them quick, simple. Um, and then for those of you that need more, you can either, when available, purchase the extended version that goes into detail or has more. And um, you can also visit my website and get any information or reach out to me there that way, okay? So uh, one of the things that I continue to run into is a sales tax, okay? A lot of people ask about sales tax or they don't, they, they don't always tie out. So I see a lot of people that basically aren't tying up to the sales tax report, which just so you know, will not pass a sales tax audit should that happen to you, okay? Um, I don't know for those of you that need to hear this, um, an, a sales tax auditor through your state is not gonna ask you to explain your calculations or how you come up with this. It either ties out or it doesn't, okay? They're gonna ask you for some sales tax reports or they're gonna ask you how you came up with this and it should kind of make sense, okay? I, I know a lot of people like to calculate things differently or do all these weird calculations. Um, there should be no uh, guesswork in sales tax. Um, in cases where cash flow might be an issue, there are ways to kind of plan for sales tax. I, if cash flow is an issue, I would recommend um, setting up a separate bank account just for sales tax so you can feel comfortable moving the amounts and, and doing your secret calculations that way for those of you that do that. But we really shouldn't need to do that, okay? Everything that you need to plan or to pay or to stay on top of sales tax is right within your fingertips, okay? So um, that being said, again, I'm gonna just dive right in. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a sales tax report uh, by going into reports, legacy reports, and I just jump right here to sales tax, okay? And then from there, um, I am going to isolate dates, okay? So in this case, I am going back to 2021. We're gonna pretend that says 2022, okay? But this is what we are looking at. There should be nothing odd or weird. This is the sales tax report. I saved this. Okay, I usually will save this right to my computer, my desktop, okay? And this, there should be no guesswork, okay? So here I owe, I mean, the, the state of California, according to this, $682.77. And according to this, I would owe the state of Nevada $3,657.54 for a total of $4,340.31, okay? Now, how do I check? How do I know if this is correct? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that right now. But one of the things I do wanna point out quickly, and it's something that you can just check yourself on, okay? And um, I would basically take, whoop, I am gonna take, oh gosh, let me move this. Um, I was gonna use that to calculate. So I'm gonna basically take the taxable dollar amount and I'm gonna calculate the sales tax. And you would just do that by 6661.22 times um, 10, whoop, 10 and a quarter percent, okay? That, and I'm just gonna put it on my screen. So I just did a quick calculation on an Excel spreadsheet because I wanna know that that ties out, and it does. So I, I don't have any issues on that. When it doesn't, unless you live in a place where maybe time, well, no, this is for, for an item. This is also why I name my invoices. So based on what it is, just so we're clear, your items are taxed, 
based on the sales code that you set up in studio okay so that is going to determine so when the first thing that sticks out to me is there should be nothing in this that is in the non-taxable column unless for some reason there was installation okay because installation isn't taxable in the state of california or repair okay um, I do work with a lot of people in different states, so I am very well versed, and I do have cheat sheets in just about, not every, most states, okay? And there are just some differences. I know, um, I think New York or New Jersey doesn't, there is, um, labor is, is taxed at a different rate, um, but the majority of the things that you sell are going to be taxable, okay? And just so we're clear, sales tax is the responsibility of the end user. So for those of you that are saying, that sometimes come and you say, well, I paid the sales tax to the retailer or you know to the vendor when I bought it. Well, there's a way to record that, okay? Even if it was like Home Depot where they're not gonna care, like Home Goods, right? They're a retailer, you wanna get credit for that. You still have to charge your client sales tax and I recommend that you charge them the full sales tax as opposed to deducting the amount that you paid because if you have some, if your client is somebody like me or has somebody like me working for them, I would pick it apart and I would then know your markup. So there's that. So just make sure that you are well versed in the state or states for some of you that work in multiple states and I have a lot of those. Just make sure that you're well versed in the state that you're working at. Okay, there are a lot of just different rules, but, but the theory remains the same. Goods and services are taxable unless they have a resale license and they intend to, re, to, to resell it, okay? And even things that you then in turn keep or you know discount or any of that, there, there are ways to process everything. But at the end of the day, when I pull up my balance sheet for this period, it should always tie out to your sales tax report. If it does not, then you know that there's something, um, you know, that is not calculating right, or that um, maybe you didn't zero out the last time. I always make sure that when I process sales tax, the way that I post it, I make sure it zeroes out, and I will show you what I mean by that, okay? That zeroes out, and that I start the next month with a zero balance. So. For those of you that have sales tax that is due monthly, um, I, you know, then you know sales tax is due on or by the 20th, unless you're in California, but uh, that is due for the prior month. So now that we're heading into April, on April 20th or before, for me, I like to process everybody's sales tax more than, like at least two days before for a number of different reasons. If the sales tax return or payment get kicked back for any reason. I still have a time. I still have enough time to correct anything before I get penalized for it. Secondly, I also want to make sure for those like states like um, I'm trying to think Florida. Florida is one that it takes them a couple days, and so even if you're processing it on the 20th, it could be late. Okay, so you gotta watch those. You gotta know the state that you're working in. Don't assume that everything is the same. I double check, I triple check, I go to the website, I don't take anybody else's word for it. So you wanna make sure that your tax locations are set up correctly. I like to keep, I always set them up to read the percentage because I wanna know that it's right. I like to remember, I like to know, and I don't wanna look a lot of places, even though the report that I run does show it here too. So I want to know that that, in fact, like if it just said Fremont 1, I like to know the state and the uh, city because some cities have different um, tax rates and stuff. There's different rules for different states. So know the ones that you're working in, okay? So that being said, I am going to also double check on my um, sales tax for Nevada, which is at um, 44 236.38 times 8.27%. And that, just so we're clear, I want to show you, I just calculated that as well. Okay, so I took this 44,226.38 and I 
uh, calculated the 8.27. But that's not all. When you go to the non-taxable, I look and make sure what we're saying is truly, in fact, non-taxable, okay? Because that would be a red flag for an audit, just so we're clear. So like here, the design fee, okay, probably this is like labor, so I get it. And then here, um, you can see that this is also a time billing, again, no tax. And then when I look at this area rug, my guess is that that was installation and or repair. Okay, I double check it, but that's really what that, then that would truly be non-taxable. Okay, I don't just go by this and assume that it's all correct because a lot of times whoever's preparing the sales tax return has their own login and pretty much is saying that they, they're, they're submitting this. And I take that very seriously because, you know, I, I care about my name and I care about my, um, my accounting number for the various states, okay? So that matters. Um, make sure that you're submitting things correctly and that they make sense, okay? Because it's, it's easier to just catch it and correct it than to ever get pulled in an audit because if they find one mistake on an audit, know that they will probably more than likely pull more. And if they do and you're not doing things correctly, then, then you can get penalized, okay? And I've seen it happen. And I've also um, won a lot of them as well. I, I've not, knock on wood, I've not lost a single audit, okay? So for sales tax or anything else. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, double check now. I'm gonna move this aside and I'm gonna go ahead. So you remember the number, 4340.31. I want to look at my um, balance sheet. So I'm gonna go back to reports. I'm gonna go back to balance sheet and because I, I'm cheating and going back to December 2021. We're pretending that it's 2022. And we're going to pull up the balance sheet just so we can see. So um, here I have sales tax payable for $4,340.31. That makes sense. That ties out. Now, when I get ready to post it, now, like let's say you go on the website and, you know, it's up or down a penny, or I know a lot of states like um, Tennessee is one. Um, there's a few others that will give you a discount. I think Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, I know for sure do give you an early or on-time filing discount, okay? And I like to take those whenever I can. And so I still am gonna want to post my payment to clear this, okay? And I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. And that would be assuming that this is all um, tie, tying into the return that's filed with the state. Now, like I said, if you are up or down a penny, I adjust this, okay? And I, I don't think I ever am off by, like I said, more than, I mean, at max, depending on how many um, tax locations, maybe, um, three, four, five cents maybe. There should never be dollars or more, you know, even up to a dollar maybe, give or take, depending on if your state is one that rounds and not all of them do, okay? So if there's any questions to what I've said in regards to that, let me know. But um, moving on, I am going to go ahead and post this. Um, actually, I'm not gonna show that because that's confusing and that probably should be on the extended, but basically, how you're gonna post this is going to zero out every month. So even though I would be filing this on or about the 20th of the following month, when I go to post my payments, I have it date for the correct period because it's basically like it clears for that period and it's in transit. It's either gonna go, it would be almost as if you wrote a check, like back in the day you would write a check. If I wrote a check on the 31st for that date, uh, for, for that dollar amount, it would still, it would be captured and it would be in transit, okay? And that's how I treat this, okay? So I like to see it clear and if it does not, then I, I you, if you wish to just post it on the 20th, I still go ahead and double check the GL, okay? And how you would do that is by running, um, let's just show you. Um, you're gonna go here and you're gonna just run the GL report and I'm gonna show you.
and I also run it through prepaid, okay? So this is gonna show you what that looks like. You can see that I reclassed things <laughs> for teaching purposes, but I put it back in. So now you can see what makes that up, okay? So I did do some adjustments, but they should zero out always to clear, and right now, um, they only clear because I of the way I'm showing all of them. I'm showing Canada and everything else, okay? So this is a little different than what you would normally see, but um, that is my blip on sales tax. Um, if you are a, a subscriber on my website, know that you have access to um, some of all the, uh, actually I pulled all the handouts for the states that I work in, so there's at least maybe 10 or 15 states, I will be pulling the rest of them. If there's anything that's unclear that you're unsure of, book on my website, it's marievitton.com. Okay, I have a number of different um, packages, appointments, and services that I offer, so check that out. And um, I look forward to you tuning in on the next one. Thank you.